Hello and welcome to Switzer's CEO Masterclass and today I'm talking to Michelle Delizia who's Executive Director at Recce Pharmaceuticals. Uh, Michelle, thanks for joining us on the program. Very welcome Peter, great to join you. Yeah, now to, look, at a time when the whole world is thinking about drugs and treatments and viruses and things like that, tell us what Recce Pharmaceuticals does. Well, we're pioneering a brand new class of synthetic antibiotics, which are going to offer for the very first time antibiotics that not only work in the first instance, but importantly, go on to keep on being effective, even with repeated use and not lose their potency against a wide range of deadly bacteria. Yeah. Now you use the word synthetic and a lot of people wouldn't understand the difference between normal antibiotics and synthetic. So could you fill us in on that one? Absolutely. So the uh, synthetic antibiotics are what we can choose to use and design from a laboratory source. Currently, the antibiotics that we have are based from natural sources. So, uh, for example, sourced from fungi, sometimes adapted a little in the laboratory, but primarily are naturally sourced. Mm. And their fundamental weakness is that they have specific mechanisms of action. That means that they lock onto a, a particular site in a bacterium. Inevitably what happens, and as we've seen now with all of the antibiotic uh, resistance accelerating, is the bacteria mutate. They're very clever. They evade the antibiotic, they mutate into a superbug, and you're left with the very uh, uh, real health threat of an antibiotic that no longer works. Now, the advantage of synthetic antibiotics, which we have uh, pioneered and designed, is that you're not limited to what's being offered in nature. You're not operating, if you like, from what I perceive as an inherent position of weakness. You are operating from a position of power because you get to choose your chemical, design your molecule, and in our case, design a universal mechanism of action. Hmm. That means that man, no matter how much that bacteria may mutate, our antibiotic will still be effective, even with repeated use. So a hmm. good, convincing, long-term solution to a very real health crisis. Okay, so listening to you, it seems to me that, you know, if you know, in a world which loves everything organic, uh, organic has a, has a shortcoming in the sense that you know, the, the, the virus or the bacteria can you know, respond pretty positively to it over time and create a super bug. But your synthetic um, attack weapon is a bit like the Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator of attack weapons when it comes to these kinds of, of, of sicknesses and problems. That's a very good way of putting it. Uh, we like to call it that it's a unique, universal mechanism of action. Yeah. It's not limited to a specific site on the bacterium. So hmm. it will operate and destroy bacteria through a universal mechanism of action that's common to all bacteria, whether they're gram negative, gram positive, a superbug, even a mutated superbug. It hmm. will keep working even with repeated use. Okay, so when you started to, to develop the synthetic um, you know, uh, assault weapon on bacteria uh, and viruses, is that right, both of those, what was the target? What was the, the one you were going after to prove the model? Well, certainly we started off with the uh, standard range of bacteria uh, that are, are commonly used to assess uh, antimicrobial resistance. So we looked at uh, common bacteria such as uh, uh, Staph aureus, which is a gram positive, E. coli, Pseudomonas, your common everyday uh, pathogens, which nonetheless can cause very uh, serious infections in hospitals following surgery, for example. Right. Started with those and then moved on into the uh, superbugs, 
So we uh, moved on and looked at methicillin resistant staph or golden staph. We looked at carbapenem resistant E. coli. Uh, that's causing a lot of problems around the world at the moment. So moving into superbugs that were listed on the World Health Organization's top 10 list of uh, you know, deadly pathogens that they're wanting to get on top of quickly. Okay. And so... Once we'd so Sorry, Michelle, go on. So once we'd identified that, yes, we know that we kill these organisms well, we then ran the antibiotic through what really could be viewed as the most important test, and that is, will it keep on working? We've got everyone out there now saying, look, I found an antibiotic in a cave. I found one in the garden, which is great. And they can say, it is antibiotic, it does kill. The problem with it is that it will not keep on killing with repeated use. Mm. It will have a specific mechanism of action that the bacteria will outsmart and mutate. So what, that's why we have the advantage. We can keep on killing with repeated use. Okay, so, so where is the, the position of the product right now? Uh, you know, in terms of its development and its sale and its you know, your ability to market it. Where are you in, in, on that sort of time scale? Certainly going very well. We've recently just signed an agreement for a phase one safety trial uh, here in Australia. And backing up that uh, entry into phase one, which is all about safety, we've conducted many uh, preclinical studies to confirm that we have uh, safety in dosing at very high levels. So that's giving us a, a clear runway and a reassurance that as we head into the clinic, we've got a, a, a good runway to achieve the safety that we've seen preclinical and seeing that reproduced in the clinic. Okay, and so in, in this world, you know, getting that technology patented, what's the position there? Uh, we've got very good protection with our patents and the company has uh, invested heavily to ensure that this excellent technology is well protected. So for example, we have protection in uh, all of these significant global pharmaceutical markets. So that's being uh, USA, UK, Europe, China, Japan, Australia. So we've got our pharmaceutical markets protected. We've also gone to protect the uh, modes of administration of our antibiotics. So we're not only an intravenous um, application, say to treat sepsis or blood poisoning, but we also have important application and demonstrated efficacy in oral dosing, for example, to treat Helicobacter pylori, and also to treat uh, topically mode of administration, for example, infected wounds. So we've protected our markets, our modes of administration, and we're also uh, protecting the uh, manufacturing process for our antibiotic, which is wholly owned by our company and is a very simple and economic process in contrast to present uh, antibiotic manufacture, which can be multi, multi-step and very complicated. Mm. So what's, what's the financial position of the company at this point in time? Very strong. We've recently just submitted our 4C uh, documentation to the ASX. That sees us currently with some 4 million uh, in the bank and with the addition of the uh, research and development grant rebate, giving us a, a runway of around $10 million to get us into the first clinical trial and beyond. Hmm. We also successfully raised last year uh, some $6.78 million at uh, 26 cents a share. We're currently trading at 38 cents a share. So that's a, a fantastic uh, hmm. encouragement there. Where did the idea come from to come up with something that becomes like a a heat-seeking missile when it comes to killing bacteria, which doesn't have the same properties as the ones you've described before. Where sure, I think 
be the cradle of invention, if you like, is there's necessity and there's also, I would say, brilliance. So in, in that case, our, our founder, uh, Dr. Graham Melrose, who is a uh, former head of research and development at Johnson & Johnson, saw in one of the, um, he was involved deeply in, in healthcare and had a very strong background pioneering polymer technology. And he had that light bulb moment, if you like, where he saw a compound with, he knew would have antibiotic properties and then married that with his knowledge of polymer chemistry and had that critical aha moment, this, this will work. And it did, it did. And also we've seen the rise in the last 50 years, more and more of antibiotic resistance that's really now becoming a global health crisis. And that's pushed the need and attracted the funding for antibiotics such mm. as ours. Yeah. So where do you see the company being in 12 months time? I see the company in a general sense coming more and more into the global spotlight as a healthcare innovator offering real solutions to problems that are increasingly threatening humanity. For example, we're well aware of the uh, crisis that's been brought on by the uh, corona or COVID virus. We're pleasingly also having very good activity against viruses. We're becoming more and more aware as we go into hospital of antibiotic resistant infections. Uh, World Health is projecting some 10 million deaths by 2050 because of antibiotic resistance. So I see our company becoming more and more in the spotlight in a general sense there. In a specific sense, in 12 months, I see us as having valuable human clinical data that's going to accelerate our move even further in, into hospitals. Great stuff. Michelle, thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you indeed, Peter.